Sorry it took so long to get this fucking video out. I uh, was waiting on snakes to shed, and I ended up having to work a lot. Um, so snakes are shed. I got the videos that I needed with them. So let's uh, let's get right into it. Um, <clears throat> I guess the first question to ask is: Is anery a real gene? And the simple answer to that is yes. Uh, I, I think it's a real gene. I don't think you're dealing with a s strictly polygenic, uh, a group of polygenic traits that are creating an anatheristic look. And the caveat to that is, in not in all cases anyways. I, I, think, I'll, I think some of the stuff that we're going to talk about later is um, what I think it's a two-factor, and that's uh, uh, retics tend to fade out with age and polygenic traits from specifically the Superdorf Islands already have an anatheristic look to them. So the first thing I want to do is I want to show the video I took of these two animals and show them on uh, vector scopes, waveforms, uh, histograms, and a Rec. 709 uh, color gamut. And the reason I want to show that is is has a lot to do with the fact that I, I've for years I've ran my mouth about color spectrum, and when I started breeding ternates into morphs, it was specifically for people to use those to breed into super dwarfs, because I understood that the limited color spectrum within super dwarfs are going to be very detrimental to the aesthetic value of the morph crosses they're creating. So let's take a look at this video and then we'll get back to uh, uh, some questions and answers that uh, and some issues that I kind of want to address and go over. I want to take a couple videos of a turn eight versus a super dwarf to compare color. It should be on this video here. Let's put a little bit of this together. Yep, right there. All right, now let's go to the stupid super dwarf. It's gonna be a little out of focus. That's okay. All right, let's get over to the fucking color page. As you can see, there is a massive amount of color compared to that. Let's find a part that isn't like super blurry. Now it's a little blown out, but yeah, you see all this shit here at the black. Now, let me see what my vector scope looks like. Okay, now I'm gonna bring this up. Okay, so this is before I do anything. This is kind of the range of all the colors on that on that Superdorf. And this is the range of a turn eight. To give you an idea, look at this. Look at all these midtones. Look at that. See, look at all that color. Yeah, look at that. Now, highlights will kill a little color, but that's not that is not killing color close this up that right there there that's a little more reasonable go to turn eight because it's a little uh, just a hair blown out too let me pull this down there that's a little a little fair so i want to i want this to be as fair as possible the amount of color that's showing up is just significantly more and it's you know, you can't really, and this is what I've been trying to show for so, like, this is what I've been talking about for so long, is amount of color missing in superdors, and that color is right here. That's all your color, superdorf. That's all your color on a turnate. Look at these graphs. It doesn't look like there's much midtones at all here. You know, there's just it's just nothing. So even if I say pump up the contrast, raise raise the pivot, put that contrast up there, make that fucking brighter, jack the saturation up, it it still it still don't compete. Even if I make it try to make it look better, or if I uh, try to add some fucking red to it, you know it, you can see what happens. It just throws everything off in there. So let me fucking undo a bunch of this shit. Oops, okay, I gotta fucking pull that down there. Yeah, I mean, so when I'm talking about color spectrum, 
you know, this is it. This is what I'm talking about. And when you get into these anneries, that's the other thing that I think is causing a lot of this, a lot of these uh, misidentification, simply because you can't, there, there's so many people working with these animals and there's so many morphs being thrown into them that of course there's going to be mistakes made and as long as people be like hey i made a mistake i fucked up you know that that's cool but at the same time we need to understand that one of the reason these mistakes are happening and is going to continue to happen and have happened a lot more than people realize is because of what you're looking at right here and what you're looking at right here is let me see if i can fucking play this put this on full screen where the fuck is my fucking you prick son of a bitch it took my fucking uh vector scope and, and waveforms and shit away but you know you have a snake that already looks anery so if you're layering it on top of morphs there's no reason to think that you're not going to get animals that look anery to begin with this is just a small segment of what I wanted to show people was just how drastically different the color spectrum is of a super dwarf versus another locality. And and I mean, it can pretty much be the only the only retics that I know of that are on this level of the super dwarf in that limitation are other super dwarfs and to some extent Kaiwadi and, and Jampia. So we don't really, so no matter what you compare them to, you're going to get a similar result. Now, I mean, obviously that turn eight is, is going to smoke a, a lot of other animals, a lot of other localities. Um, but, you know, you put this up against the Bali, you know, and, and those yellows are going to fucking destroy the turn eight. So, uh, you know, I, that's, this, this is the thing that I talked about back in I think 2012 was um, uh, when I thought I'd produced those uh, Annery Superdorfs just to find out that I didn't I was mistaken and um, and I said back then you know that there was going to be a major issue in the future with Annery and that was uh, 12 years ago and so here we are now so uh, but this is a good visual representation of color spectrum with the uh with the turnates and and the superdorfs and it's so interesting um if i went over expose this <laughs> you, you know you would be seeing uh, this would look even worse but when the turnate hits right here there's just such a much broader range uh, of colors in there so much more saturation so um, and maybe what I can do, I might be able to, um, show that if I jack up midtones, uh, where the fuck's my midtones right there? See, that's your midtones. And th this, this black shit, that's this and this and this. And so that's actually right here. And then that's right there. Um, no, that's actually the snake right there because it's a, it's a hair, hair blown out. Uh, but, I mean, there's just massive, massive color difference there. I, you know, you can't argue with this. And this is one of the points that uh, I, I'm making about the uh, super dwarfs being so limited. And because of that limited color spectrum, it's automatically going to create a significant shift in color when you especially start gene stacking um, especially in terms of shading so you're going to get more towards that green brown gray shading and what does an anery look like it's it's towards that direction so whether it's an anery whether you're dealing with actual anatheristic gene or you're dealing with just a just a regular super dwarf um, like this one's kind of a unique one it's kind of light um, but it's usually, you know, it's either a little bit darker, a little bit lighter. But this one actually has a lot of banding in it. Um, 
which is actually nice. Uh, locality wise, this is a quote unquote unknown old school super dwarf. In my opinion, it is a Madu. After seeing the parents, they look Madu. They look very similar to my Madus and Travis's Cubus's uh, unknown male. Um, so my guess is this is a Madu, and this is this is pretty s standard behavior for a Madu pattern. Um, and that, and that, all that did was give me an opportunity to get a little more color uh, with all this extra all this extra banding underneath instead of it having a sharp uh, cutoff instead of getting that triangle and having a lot of silver here this gives you an opportunity for even more color so uh, uh, one of the higher side silver super doors would actually have less color so uh, this is about as uh, good as you're gonna get to show for some higher colors with how say maybe having like an extremely nice super door so this is going to be like a slightly above average give you a little bit more color but still it, it can't even come close to that so that's where you're at with this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to render this out and put this why is this one so much longer whatever i don't give a fuck uh, I'm gonna send this out in 8k and I guess it would help if I go to my fucking render page Annery shit And we'll go location should be on my fucking temp there we go Glorious fucking 8k and it's out of focus cuz I'm amazing. I'm gonna take that down This should be at uh, 30 frames, but I forgot I fucked up and uh, I I forgot to change the timeline framing so my bad I don't think that's gonna matter it'll still be out of focus all right so I'll add that into the video so you can see an un a blurry out of focus uh, turn 8 and super dwarf but I hope that helped to give you a visual explanation of what I'm always running my mouth about when it comes to color spectrum I forgot to fucking show this. Here, here's your rec uh, 709 color space. That's all the colors in rec 709. Now this is this is the colors that the turn eight represents, and then you'll get to see the colors that the fucking super door represents. And this is this is going to be really, really telling. It, it's going to show it much more significant than what the vector uh, scope showed which was good but this really really shows it all right right here <laughs> that's a super dwarf <laughs> look at that that's like completely lost so um you know after you look at that video you can see just how much more color there is in a turn eight than there is in a super dwarf and it's undeniable you know it's you can see it on the rec 709 color gamut what shows up and it's over double the the color spectrum so um i think that's that's a huge issue and i think because of the natural look of a non anatheristic super dwarf that's where we're running into trouble. That's why these uh, misidentifications are happening in some cases. Now, a lot of people um, like to throw that anery shit on anything that has a green tint, anything that has a faded look. Um, so I guess, I guess we'll talk about um, anatheristic uh, morph versus polygenic traits. And so we'll take a look at some pictures. Now these are pictures. Now these are some pictures of my old animals, and uh, how I swore this was over a decade ago. This is probably 2011 ish. I really thought I had anatheristic superdors, and I thought the breeding that I did was would produce the first anatheristic superdors. And they even kind of looked at when I hatched them out. But if you take a look at these animals, here is uh, the female. 
And, you know, the snake definitely looks anery, especially that many years ago. I think I originally acquired this snake in roughly 2006, 2007, and um, she just didn't prove out. And, I mean, she even looked it. So I had made this mistake a very long time ago, and a very long time ago I said, in the future, this anery uh, gene is going to be very problematic because of the natural tendencies of superdwarfs to look anatheristic. So this is a good example of uh, an anery looking animal. Um, she's kind of blown out there. I have her down in a cooler and I, I think I used to, I don't know, I think there was a flash on the camera. So she's a little blown out. But this is her, this was her laying the eggs uh, from the clutch. This is, this is actually the super dwarf line that Chris Wilson has. Uh, this is, this is the clutch that his, uh, F1s are from. Uh, this is the male again, has an anatheristic look, still think he had some kind of marble gene. Um, this is a very small snake. This was actually uh, one of the few super dwarfs I ever saw just unwilling to really get over six feet. He might have hit six feet by the time he died, but hell, that snake would not grow. But, you know, I thought I for sure I had anery. I mean, he was a little questionable. The female looked a little more anery, but I didn't. So here was a male produced from that clutch. This was one of my favorite animals. Clearly not anatheristic. Um, has a ton of color, has a really nice pattern. And then this was a, a female from that same clutch, clearly not anatheristic. And as far as I know, there's never been an anery pop out out of that line. And, uh, you know, and they came from an animal that looked like this. You know, and I mean, everything about that animal suggests that it's anatheristic. So, you know, I, I mean, as people, you know, and I had to let people know, like, hey, you know, this, this isn't, this line isn't anatheristic. I was hoping it would be, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we've seen a little bit of that recently in the last couple of years where people have had very anatheristic looking superdors and, um, or anatheristic uh, looking superdorf morph combos, and they proved out, namely uh, Eric Lee. And Eric Lee was kind enough to send me some pictures of some animals that, you know, there was no, uh, specifically one that he was like, sent me this picture. He's like, this animal didn't actually prove out. And when you see it, it's actually kind of crazy that this animal didn't prove out. It's, it's this one here. I believe, obviously, it's a motley. Um, I can't remember who was supposed to be platinum or not. But, uh, you know, this was an animal that, I mean, I, I would guess it was an anatheristic animal. So, uh, what do you, you know, what, so the question here is, what is happening? You know, why does an animal look so anatheristic and then end up not being anatheristic and genuinely mistaking it as anatheristic, you know, with no ill intentions, you know, in terms of misinformation or, or ripping people off? I mean, that's just a, to me, that looks like more of an honest, honest mistake uh, for whoever sold that animal to Eric. Uh, but now that raises a question of, can we even tell them apart? And if you're, you're more interested in taking a look at some of Eric's stuff that has looked anery and proved out anery, he's got some really nice GC snow stuff, that kind of, you know, uh, I, I, you know, check him out on Facebook or Instagram. He's got some great looking animals. Um, and he's been very forthcoming and handled this issue appropriately in how when things didn't prove out or things turned out a certain way, you know, he, he was right up front and, uh, you know, handled it uh, much better than I think we're going to see some other people handle it, but we won't get into that. I guess we're going to have to talk about, uh, anatheristic gene versus, uh, you know, polygenic traits. Uh, if we look at some polygenic traits of say this Kalatoa specifically, so we know it's not an anery, so we have to logically come up with a reason for why it looks anery. And the only answer is polygenic traits. The polygenic traits in that island chain have created snakes that I guess need these colors to 
survive. So it's, it's very uh, common sense to me that if any gene was to pop up in that island chain, it would be an actual anatheristic gene because that would require pretty much the least amount of genetic mutation. But there's also the question of to what extent are we dealing with polygenic traits? And I can't answer that question. I honestly can't because we have never, the thing that's never been done, and of all people, let me get my mouse off there, of all people <laughs> that was talking about doing one of the things that needed done with the snow project, it was Jay Brewer years ago. He was going to take snows, instead of making them bigger, he was, instead of adding more and more super dwarf blood, he was going to add more and more mainland blood to make, you know, 20 foot snows for the, you know, all them people that want a 20 foot snow. So he actually, you know, that's one unfortunate project that he didn't actually do because that would have told us, at least with that specific line of whatever he had, if it was just a set of polygenic traits that had kind of been locked in almost like a color phase that eventually got bred out over time and you just ended up with mainly in colors, you know, because once you get down to, uh, you know, 12.5% super dwarf blood, are you still getting any anatheristic traits or is that, are they just all disappeared by then? And that would have told us what was going on. So the other reason, the other answer for why this snake looks the way it does besides polygenic traits that have eliminated, eliminated a lot of the oranges, yellows, reds is the snake is old. And I think we all know that, retics don't keep their color they keep color better than most snakes um but they they don't they're not you know once once they're older they start to fade out i had a platy jamp that was really pretty uh around three and a half to five years old after the about six seven year old mark that snake, unfortunately, I don't have a comparison picture or I'd show it, looked completely different. She had lost a ton of color. She didn't even really have much of a platinum look to her anymore. And uh, I, I, that was a snake that I saw that I watched fade out over the years. And if, you, if we look at this animal's offspring... And if we look at this animal's offspring, chances are at later stages, you know, 8 to 12 years old, it probably wouldn't have these colors. It would probably be much lighter, much duller, and have more of an anatheristic look. And the same goes for this one as well. We prob I probably would have lost a lot of its color and um, had a very, very similar look to the to the parents once they had approached uh, an older age. So I think that's I think that's the explanation, at least as good of one I can come up with, as what's actually causing this. Uh, for what's actually causing animals that look anery to not be anery. That's a set of polygenic traits that worked very well in for that environment. That's why they evolved that way, uh, accompanied with the fact that animals tend to fade out and lose their color with age. So that is my answer to why we have so many anery looking non anneries And we also seem to have two color phases, like a high silver versus a more of a green uh, in, in super dwarfs. And I have a feeling that they both, when mixed with the morphs, are causing the confusion as well. So uh, if we're going to take anery super dwarfs and compare them with the morph crosses that are being made, and I think that's where most of the mistakes are being made. N now, I, I think we need to talk about how color is affected by morphs. And there's a picture I want to show, and it's very counterintuitive. I remember I, when I was talking to Eric about this a couple of weeks ago, I said, I said, look at what an endome super motley looks like. It's very counterintuitive. And if we take a look at that animal now, 
So this is her. And we're seeing this color shift too among T positives, um, Mochino GCs, other stuff like that. Uh, I think, uh, like, uh, Reach Out Reptile Zombie Snows. We're not quite getting the color palette that you would normally think you would see with albinos. So, if so, now we're running into the problem of okay, well, if this is how uh, an Indo an, an Indo super motley looks, um, would it would it actually look any different if it was anery, or you know would I you know what I mean? It's like would we actually be able to tell ever anything? because of how dramatic the color shift is in like, we would think this would be the darker version of a purple GC, right. Or, or something like that. But especially in the GCs where you're seeing these much darker colors on Mocos, Mochinos, uh, uh, fucking Indos and orange glows. And we're not actually seeing that we're seeing this weird color shift. And so we know that a morph can cause a color shift like this. So we're going to have to take that into consideration uh, as as well as and that's you can have some unexpected color shifts with morphs in their super form or combined with other morphs. So one thing we know for sure is that when you gene stack, you start to lose pieces of color and pattern because people tend to forget that you're not adding color or adding pattern. Typically, you're shutting off some phenotype, wild type, normal expression or you're just manipulating pattern. So the issue that comes in here is when you're working with uh, superdwarfs that have a very, very limited color spectrum, uh, you are also going to be stripping away another layer. And if you're working with anery or suspected anery, the natural outcome when combined with multiple traits that either cause a color shift and or are stripping away certain aspects of color are going to have a very anatheristic look to them, a very washed out look to them, and a color shift towards anatheristic, whether they are actually anatheristic or not. And I think that is actually where the problem is coming from when we're talking about the, the morph combos in the superdwarfs. The superdwarf polygenic traits in terms of color are canceling out a lot of the mainland color coming from the other side. So logically, the answer here is that if you have, whether you have anatheristic uh, superdwarfs or you have superdwarfs whose polygenic traits create an anatheristic look, chances are on your first couple breedings, 50% or 75 percenters, you're, you're going to get a very similar result with morph combos, whether they're actually anatheristic or not. And I think that is probably the biggest issue that we're going to see moving forward is the identification. Now, I'm not suggesting that this is a massive blow to the anery industry or the anery aspect of the retic industry because I think you can I think people will be able to get things separated uh, I don't think it's going to be as hard as people think as long as they're willing to do the work to do it so I, I don't think this is like a death blow to the gene but I, I do think we need to, t to ha try to have a better understanding moving forward of what we're seeing and what we're seeing is an anatheristic gene and a set of polygenic traits that cause an anatheristic look the other question is is there multiple lines of anery well obviously because there's multiple islands of which anatheristic animals have come from so it's unlike so you can't really say it's the same gene. It's it, it's it's manipulating the the color traits in the same way, but I think it's fair enough to say that it's the same. You know, it, it's it's a different different anery line, but it's doing the same thing. 
Now, whether or not they're compatible or not, my guess is that they all are. The only way I could see them not being compatible is if the gene mutation that shuts off the red is occurring at different points in embryonic development according to the uh, line itself. And I, I don't really have any proof for that. I just seem to, it just seems like some, some morphs are baked in and express sooner in the the cell splitting replication all of that of an embryo before others uh, specifically jag i think jag happens very early i think i think that i think that happens very early in embryonic development i think that's why jag is such a dominant uh, pattern structure and stuff that you add to it could only manipulate it in so far as it has the jag pattern to work with like namely motley like uh, you know a jag motley how a jag motley looks is incredibly counterintuitive to what you think a jag motley would look like based on what motley has done to most other morphs which is dominate the shit out of them so my guess is there are multiple lines of um annery chances are they're all compatible uh I, and the the only I only want to say this, and I, I have no proof whether there is or isn't, but if you're going to take one thing away from from this part, is that don't let somebody bullshit you that took your money tell you that there are other lines of anneries, and it was the other person's line that's bullshit, and it didn't prove out with theirs, but theirs is the real line because uh, I'm not going to say who. But I think that's going to be a very popular excuse coming out of a certain facility very soon. Uh, because I suggested that that facility's anneries were very questionable a long time ago, literally years ago, because I think they're mistaking uh, green phases or higher green pigment for, for anathristic animals. And uh, I think that's more of a polygenic trait. So that's uh, that. That is my take on that. Uh, I guess I, I kind of want to try to offer a solution to this because the the Retix Lounge's fucking TK video got so much shit for just putting out fucking data, and uh, you know they just blew up the world with data that was actually known if you cared and cared enough to know it. Uh, I think there is a solution to this, and I think the solution is very simple. It's add red pigment into your anery projects. So you have Tom Belongan, or Tam Belongan, you have Solaire, you have Sulawesi, which I don't really recommend using because it's a Sulawesi. You have Red Phase Turnate, which is a little iffy because it's a phase. Then you have uh, Halmahara. There's, uh, if you ha get a chance to get your hands on a Bhutan, well, if, like there's hardly any in the country, you could use that too. And there's even some red-leaning Philippines. I would recommend using any of those to start to separate your annery projects. You know, especially if you go Tambalongan, Slayer, Halmahara. You know, Halmas and Slayer is basically the same size snake. Uh, it, it will give you an opportunity to add red pigment. And you can't have red pigment in Annery. So if you have red pigment, if you get to the point where you have the red pigment coming from both sides from those locality traits, and you have an anatheristic gene in there, it will be night and day which ones are anatheristic and which ones aren't in the clutch. You you will be able to, I mean, it won't even be a question of what's what. The non-anneries will have red pigment. The anneries will not. So that is my recommendation. And, and, you know, adding any of those localities is just going to improve the aesthetic value overall of your projects anyways. You get all the side color, the side banding, the extra pattern, 
the extra wild caught genetics, you know, extra, extra everything. There's no downside to actually doing what I'm suggesting. It does two things. It adds value to your project and it also adds an extended layer of protection and value long term because you've taken the time to really separate out your line of annery and proved it out by saying, hey, look, I put a ton of red pigment into this project and here here's the ones with red pigment and here's the anneries that don't have any so that's my solution to this and um i, I don't want anybody to take this as a attack on anybody out uh, you know even the person even the, the one me saying there's a facility that's probably going to find themselves in a little bit of a mess which i'm not getting into um you guys can probably do the math and figure that one out but I just I, I think Annery is a worthwhile gene to work with. I don't have any here currently. If I do move forward with like Andrew or somebody of, of doing an Annery project, the first thing we're going to do is take it into Halmahara. That That's step one. Because those Halmas are, are like a next level on uh, on red pigment. It's it, they, they're so dark, it's ridiculous. And it's this insane dark red. So, um, that's, that's my, uh, that's my take on all of this. I, I hope you found, uh, it useful or helpful. And, uh, I, I really liked what I was able to show on the Rec 709, uh, color gamut to once and for all show. I'm just not talking out of my asshole when it talk, when I'm talking about color spectrum and the need to, uh, broaden that color spectrum to maintain, the aesthetic values that you're going for, especially with super dwarf morph crosses. So if that, I hope that makes sense as to why I've been doing all these turn eight crosses to try to keep the value up and, you know, supply animals for, for super dwarf breeders to really make their stuff, uh, uh, hold color and hold pattern. So, but that's all I got. And I hope it was helpful.